today I'm going to talk about a Star Trek the adventure game from West End Games in 1985. It's actually I found it hard, hard to find good games from the original Star Trek series out there so I thought I'd give this one a shot. It's a two-player game but it also discusses uh, how to play solitaire as well. The cover art is fine obviously um, my understanding is they had the license for Star Trek, so this is official Star Trek images, obviously. Looks like some of their newer attire, I guess. It's got nice components. West End Games usually does a good job with the components. So the back of the box shows a little bit about what's involved. It's interesting also that it, you can look at it from the Federation perspective or also the the Klingon perspective. Mission Alert, Captain Kirk, Enterprise. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, her five-year mission to seek out new worlds and new civilizations, patrolling in the Organian sector between Earth and the dreaded Klingon Empire. She must deter the Klingons from their schemes of conquest without resorting to war. For the Organians, a wise and ancient race with awesome power forbid it, and they can enforce their edict. The Klingons are a ruthless and oppressive race. They cannot be allowed to subvert and conquer the worlds of the sector. The Enterprise and her crew must stop them and persuade the inhabitants to join the Federation in peace and brotherhood. This is your task. Live long and prosper. Mission alert. Koloth, Klingon commander. These are the voyages of the starship. Swift Victory, his five-year mission, to fight and conquer in the name of the Emperor, patrolling in the organic sector between Klingon and the decadent United Federation of Planets. He must defeat the schemes of the Cowardly Federation without the joys of cleansing battle. For the Ganians, a meddlesome and foolish race of awesome powers forbid it, and they can enforce their edict. The Federation is a collection of sickly and decadent races who have lost their love for a victorious battle, along with all pride in the swift fangs of death. In short, they are natural slave species. Swift Victor and his crew must stop them from adding to their unhealthy union by adding the planets of the sector to their rightful place in the Empire. This is your task in the name of the Emperor. So the focus of this is exploration rather than battle. The box is a box shelf kind of game. Their box games are like thinner than Avalon Hill games, for instance, but they can fit on a bookshelf. So the box is, is fine. As far as components, it's got an eight-page eight rule book. Um, which looks like it's fairly concise. We'll look at that. It's you know, black and white. Well, it's a paragraph book based game where we do different situations. It'll refer you to paragraphs as far as what the outcomes of your actions are. So this is a lot of the core of the game here. It's like 60 pages here. So we'll see how that plays out. As far as counters, you know, it's got a, I wouldn't say a huge amount of counters. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't come with a counter tray or anything. Actually, it, it also has a hard mounted board, which takes up space. Um, so, and it's a little bit thinnish for a bookshelf game. So, yeah, a little bit difficult to find a tray that works with that. You have to have, find one that's fairly fairly thin and I just got a kind of craft right here that works. Most of the counters are five eighths inches square. Again, well done. I mean pictures of Klingons and the Federation. A lot of it is different planets, so it's got nice colorful counters for planets and and then other kind of counter markers here. As far as player aids for the Federation and Klingon you have these ship displays for the various ships for the Federation. There's the Enterprise, Ares, Surak, 
in Beijing. For the Klingons, there's Swift Victory, Hux Dupes, Death Battle, and Repentance. You have the Reputation Track. These are places for a crew and the commander. And these are your know, landing parties, of course. And obviously, choices you make here will affect the outcomes of different uh, actions in the paragraph book. It's interesting to uh, to get this detail, especially of the Klingons. So that's kind of neat. And here's the the neutral display for the players. Game record. A lot of this is you know political tracking. So the political track. Summary of skills. Again, this is shorthand notation used in the paragraphs. Reputation tables. Commissioner and agent table, summary of rules, Richter scale of culture, which is interesting. So, uh, X planet has no sa sapient life, F, Stone Age, E, pre gunpowder, D, pre industrial culture, C, industrial, pre atomic, B, atomic, without faster than light travel, A, culture with faster than light. AA culture is the is advanced as the Federation or Empire and AAA plus is culture is incomparably more advanced than the Federation or Empire. For instance, the Organians. And also in the game it comes with a couple dice. Which are fine. A little bit smallish but nice. Always like in the rules when they have a pictorial description of the counters helps out with this play here. So first of all, the most of the counters are unique, especially like crew for instance. And each of the planets are unique as well, so here's one example. So the square counter, there's 64. The Klingon and the Federation each have one starship that can carry six security officers and any number of characters. And then when they deplete their dilithium, you just flip it over and it shows that on the back. And then the Klingons and Federation each have three cruisers, similarly shown here. And you flip them over and their dilithium crystals are depleted. Each side has two star base counters. They can be placed anywhere in the Organian Treaty Zone. The back of the base counter is used if the base is destroyed, shown here. Each side has seven commissioned officers. The front of each commissioned officer is printed with a picture name. The back is printed with codes indicating the skills and possesses. And these are referred to then the paragraphs. The usual suspects up here for the Federation. And again, I like that it gives you more insight into the makeup of the Klingon. You get individual crew members' names associated with their functions. So. Each side has three character replacement officers, they don't have any, have any printed skills, and are used if any of your commissioned officers die. So, The Federation player only has three head commissioners. They are sent to conduct di diplomacy with neutral planets. They are printed with a picture and a name. So, Each side has four security officers remaining. Markers. They're placed on displays to indicate how many security officers each ship has. Reputation. Each side has a reputation marker. is placed on the player's reputation track to show how many reputation points he possesses. When the player's reputation point total is negative, the number is flipped to the back side, which is negative. Political balance. When political marker is included, is placed on the political track to indicate the political balance in the Organian sector. If the Federation player has the most political points, is placed to the UFP side up, otherwise Klingon sides up. Then the planets. So when you discover new systems, you indicate the planet and then also its Richter scale of culture. Here. Two kinds of status markers included. Planet can be neutral, in which case no 
or is placed permanently neutral, in which case the plant disc is flipped to its back side. Federation or Klingon inclined, a Federation member planet or a Klingon satellite. These are placed on top of the explored planets to indicate pl current political status, so which how they're related to either the United Federation or the Klingons. Other markers, when game turn marker is provided, there's also an extra game turn marker. And then there's a couple event markers, so a couple of events, and then also if there's a destruction item, they're indicated. Then here's the game map, which is very well done. It's uh, 22 by 17 inches, and it's, it's a it's board modded map folds in from four sections here. So the it's got star it's got unexplored stars and then it has explored planets. When you explore a star then you basically see what planet is around that star and then you indicate it by drawing from your amount of counters there. The existing ones have their technology level stated and their name, of course. Here's the United Federation of Planets. There's the Klingons. Obviously, Earth is the home world here. The home world for the Klingons is Klinst is uh, Klinstai up here. This is uh, this line indicates the boundaries of Federation space, and this is the boundaries of Klingon space. So very well done. And here's the Organ Organian Treaty Zone with the systems yet to be explored. Getting into the rules here, game sequence. Each turn of the game is starting to phases. Initiative. The players determine who is the first player and who is the second player for this turn. The player with the most reputation points is the first player. If the players have the same number, the players who side the political markers face up as the first player. Movement phase. One random event. The first player rolls a die. If he rolls a six, a random event occurs. See rule eight. Movement. The first player can move any or all the ships. After he moves his ship, he must roll to determine whether its dilithium crystals fail. Dilithium repair. If a ship with exhausted lithiums did not move this turn and is a base, in a class world or again it receives new crystals and its counter is flipped back to the undamaged side. Base repair if an undamaged ship that did not move this turn is at a base that has been destroyed, it may repair the base, remove the destroyed counter, or flip the base counter to the front side. And that's what this marker is for, it's for the marking a destroyed base. Second player now repeats steps one through four. Exploration phase. If the first player has any undamaged ships at unexplored stars, he may conduct one planetary exploration. To do this, he does a plant disc at random and places it in the ship's hex. Second player then refers to the planet description section in the paragraph book, reads a description of the planet allowed to the first player. After several Paragraph references, the first player will be asked to make a decision. After he does so, he will be awarded or penalized reputation and or political points, and may suffer casualties. Also, he is told what the planet's political status becomes. He places and moves the appropriate markers to record these changes. Second player may now conduct one planetary exploration. Political phase. The first player may use his commissioners or agents to influence the political status of planets. Agents may also attempt to sabotage ships or bases, or to assassinate commissioners. The second player may then use his commissioners or agents. Ship replacement phase. If a player has any ships on the game turn record track, he may roll to see whether his ships are replaced. Game turn record phase. Game turn marker is advanced one box. Movement. When it, has, when it is his turn to move, a player can move any or all the ships. Bases never move. Officers, commissioners, and agents never move independently. They can move only when on ships. Moving ships. Each ship can move up to 12 hexes from the hex in which begins the turn. 
After moving a ship, determine whether or not it burns out its lithium crystals. Count how many hexes there are, there are from the ship's original hex to destination hex. Roll two dice. If the total on the dice is less than the number of hexes moved, the dilithiums are exhausted. When a ship's dilithium crystals burn out, flip ship counter to its back side, which says dilithiums exhausted. Engineers, if an officer with engineering skill is aboard a ship, it can move up to 14 hexes. When you roll, a, when you roll to determine whether the dilithium crystals of a ship with an engineer fail, add two to the die roll. Exhausted dilithiums, a ship with exhausted dilithium crystals can only move two hexes per turn. Is moving an impulse power. If an engineer is aboard, it can move three hexes. You don't roll dice after moving a ship with exhausted dilithium crystals. If a ship with exhausted dilithium crystals begins its movement phase at a friendly base, a Federation base for the Federation player, a Klingon base for the Klingon player, or a AA class world in the player's home area, or at Organia, you may replace the crystals. Flip it to its front, on damaged side, the ship may not move during that turn. During the, by the terms of the Organian Treaty, the Federation and the Empire are required to allow each other's ships to visit their bases. If a ship with exhausted crystals begins movement at one of the other player's bases, place it underneath the base counter. On next turn, it is flipped to its undamaged side and cannot move during that turn. Your player is required to replace crystals by the tree, but he'll do his utmost to type your ships in red tape, costing the player that extra turn. Transfer characters. If two ships begin movement in the same hex, characters can be transferred between them. The ships can move during that turn. If any of your characters are in a planet or base in a ship, begins its movement at the planet or base, the ship may pick up the characters. A ship may drop off any of its characters at the planet or base at the same time. You may also drop off but not pick up characters at a planet or base if you end movement there. Remember the Klingon player always records the locations of his agents on paper. If a commissioner or agent is not in play, its counter is not on the board, or the agent has no location written on the Klingon player's record sheet, any ship at one of the player's AA worlds or bases may pick up the commissioner or agent. Exploring new worlds and new civilizations. To explore, new, to explore a planet, draw one of the planet disks from the box top and refer to the paragraph book to determine what your expedition finds there. The planet can only be explored once. If players have read a set of paragraphs for the planet, they cannot explore that planet again and must journey to another planet if they wish to continue exploring. When you can explore, each player may conduct only one planetary exploration per turn. You may explore a planet only if you have a ship, an unexplored star, not an unexplored planet. If you have more than one ship, an unexplored star, you may choose which one conducts planetary exploration. Ships with exhausted lithium crystals may not explore. If you have no eligible ships, it unexplored stars, you may ex explore a planet that turn. When two players want to explore the same star, when two players have ships and an unexplored star and both wish to explore there, the player who bids the most reputation points is able to explore. The other player may not explore the star. To bid, each player conceals his hand under the table or behind his back. Is on the count of three, each player reveals his hand. That's kind of weird. The player who has the most strength extended is able to extend, explore a star. Each player loses as many reputation points as the number he bid, even if he does not get to explore a star. If both players bid the same number of reputation points, the player whose face or you know, the political marker is down, that is not showing, gets to explore a star. If you bid to explore a star and lose, you may not make any other exploration that turn. Drawing planets, decide where you wish to explore then, without looking into the box upper bowl, draw one of the planet disc, read the name of the planet, and place the disc with a colored side face up and the hex you explored. Give the paragraph book to the other player. He must find the name of the planet you drew in the planet description section of the paragraph book. He must then read the plan he must then read the planet description to you. 
After the description has been read, you will roll a die. Depending on the number you roll, the other player will be referred to one of the several numbered paragraphs. Example, CD of 5, Hell World, apparently uninhabitable, and then depending on the role, you get a different paragraph. Decision paragraphs, the rest of the paragraph book contains about 800 numbered paragraphs. The player of the book turns to the paragraph with the number he found. He must read this paragraph out loud. At the end of this paragraph, the exploring player will be given a number of options. He must choose one of, the, one of these. At the end of each option is another paragraph number. The reader turns to the paragraph with the chosen option and reads it aloud. Note, sometimes the first paragraph you turn to will refer to you another paragraph before the options are listed. Just keep on going until you come to a paragraph which describes player's options. Landing parties. Often a paragraph will direct the exploring player to form a landing party before turning to the next paragraph. In this case, he must decide which commissioned officers and how many security officers he is committing to the landing party. A landing party must contain at least one commissioned officer, if any are on board. It may contain up to six men and women, adding the number of commissioned officers and security officers together. It's a good idea to send out at least a couple of security officers, red shirts I assume, if you have any, to absorb casualties. Obviously you cannot send more security officers with the landing party than you have on the ship. When you assemble a landing party, place the commissioned officers in the party in one of the landing party boxes and announce how many security officers are being sent. Usually the landing party is automatically returned to the ship after the exploration is resolved. Sometimes however the paragraph will specify that the landing party is marooned on the planet, in which case the commissioned officers counters are placed on the planet disk, and the unfortunate player must record the number of company security officers on a scrap of paper. Sometimes the paragraph will say something like immediately suffer one casually. In this case the party loses one member immediately. If immediate casualties kill all members of the landing party before a resolution paragraph is reached, the encounter is over. Read no further. The exploring player immediately scores the following. R2, P2, neutral, all the party killed. Resolution paragraphs. The reading player turns to the paragraph whose number appears after the chosen option and reads it. The paragraph will describe the result of the player's decision. At the end of this resolution paragraph, a series of short codes will appear. It looks something like this. R1, P1, anti Clyde, one casually. The number printed after the letter R is the number of reputation points gained or lost, if it is a negative number, by the exploring player. He moves his, moves his reputation marker to reflect the gain or loss. The number printed after the letter P is the number of political points gained or lost. Move the political marker to reflect this. The next phrase will indicate what the plant's political status is after exploration. If the phrase is neutral, the plant is neutral and no marker is placed. If the phrase is permanently neutral, the planet's political status can never be changed by commissioners or agents. Flip the planet disk to the name side to indicate that it's permanently neutral. If the phrase is Federation inclined, Klingon inclined, Federation member or Klingon satellite, place the corresponding status marker on the planet disk. If the phrase is pro-inclined, the planet is inclined to the exploring player. If the Federation player is exploring, place a Federation client. If Klingon, place Klingon inclined. If the phrase is anti-inclined, the planet is inclined to the opposing player. If the Federation player is exploring, place the Klingon inclined marker in the planet, etc. Sometimes a resolution paragraph will indicate a number of casualties the ship has any security officers they, officers, they always observe casualties first. Move the security officers remaining marker to reflect this loss. If the ship suffers more casualties than it has security officers, the remainder must be absorbed by commissioned officers. The player chooses which commissioned officers will die and removes them. The exploring player loses one reputation point per commissioned officer who dies. Losing security officers does not cost any points. This loss is in addition to any gain or loss indicated by the resolution paragraph. If the ship suffers more casualties than can be absorbed by security and commissioned officers, the ship is destroyed. Place its counter on the game turn record track in the same box occupied by the game turn marker. Two reputation points are lost when a cruiser is destroyed, and three when a starship is lost.
This is an addition to any loss indicated by the resolution paragraph. If there's a landing party, only crewmen in the landing party can be killed, unless specifically stated otherwise. Any additional casualties are ignored. Note, sometimes the resolu resolution paragraph will describe other special effects which result from player's choice. Simply do what the paragraph says. Note, sometimes the resolution paragraph will have a section labeled UFP and another one labeled Klingon. Read only a section labeled UFP if the Federation players exporting, etc. Skills. Sometimes the use of a skill helps the player achieve a better re resolution. Some resolution paragraphs are divided into three into several sections, one of them labeled no skill and one or more labeled with skill names. Each commissioned officer has one or more skills. Skill codes are printed on the back of office counters. These codes are summarized on neutral display. If the skill listed in the resolution paragraph is possessed by any officer in the ship, the exploring player must use the resolution printed after the skill name. If none of the list skills are possessed, use a no skill resolution. If several skills are listed and two or more are possessed by officers of the ship. The exploring player may choose which of the skill resolutions he uses. Note, circumstances other than skills will sometimes affect resolutions. For example, in some resolution paragraphs, the presence of a female commissioned officer will alter the outcome. Note, sometimes a skill name will be printed with the word mandatory. In that case, you must use that skills resolution paragraph. If any of your exploring officers has a skill, even if a second skill resolution is printed on an officer, and an officer has that skill. Note, sometimes a skill listing will occur in a paragraph of other than a resolution paragraph. For example, the paragraph might say, 100 no skill, go to 109, sciences, sciences go to 125. If there's a landing party, only the skills possessed by members of the party could affect the resolution. Exception, some paragraphs say, skill and ship. In that case, the skill only affects paragraph resolution if someone on the ship has a skill. Random events. Each player must roll for random events before he moves any of his ships. Roll one die. If a six is rolled, random event occurs. And any other roll of that ship has no random event in that turn. If random event occurs, roll both dice. Use the roll and on the colored die is a tenth digit, and the roll on the white die is a one digit. Example. Refer to the paragraph book and find the numbered paragraph corresponding to the number rolled. Read this paragraph and follow its instructions. Sometimes random event paragraphs will require a player to make decisions, just as happens during exploration. Often random event will require the player to do something by an indicated turn or lose political reputation points. It may be helpful to place an event marker on the game turn record track as a reminder that the random event's instructions must be fulfilled by then. Federation High Commissioners. The Federation player has three Federation High Commissioners. The main purpose is to persuade planets to become members of the Federation. Diplomacy of a Commissioner is at a planet during the political phase. He can try to affect its political status. Roll die. On a roll of one, two, or three, the planet's status moves one level toward the Federation membership. i.e. from Klingon client to neutral, from neutral to Federation client, or from Federation client to Federation member. Four or five, no effect. Six, the commissioned officer is committed to GAF, and the planet status moves one level toward Klingon satellite. E.g. from Federation client to neutral, etc. Commissioners cannot change the political status of Federation members, planets, and the home areas of either player, Organia, Klingon, Klingon satellites are permanently neutral planets. If there is more than one commissioner in a particular planet, you may only roll for one of them. Transport and arrival of commissioners. Commissioners are transported by ships, just like other characters. They may take part in planetary exploration. If a commissioner is not in play, you may pick him up at any Federation starbase or AA class world. If a commissioner dies, you may pick him up after the current turn. He is not permanently out of the game. Pulling rank. If a commissioner is on an exploring ship or on a planet which his ship is exploring, the Klingon player decides which option to choose when you get to the decision paragraph. Commissioners, outrank commanders, have very high opinions of their own abilities and are notorious for being incapable of ship command. Klingon agents. The Klingon agent has the Klingon player has three secret agents. No counters are provided for them because their location is usually a secret. 
Instead, the Klingon player keeps track of them by noting their locations on paper. Agents have three functions. They can influence plants political status, they can sabotage ships and bases, and they can assassinate commissioners. Subversion says sabotage and assassination. If an agent is on a planet during the political phase, he can try to influence its status in the same way as high commissioners roll die on a roll of one or two, the planet's political status moves one level toward the Klingon satellite. Three, four, or five, there's no effect. Six, the agent is caught and executed. The political status moves one level toward Federation membership. The Klingon player loses one reputation point. If an agent is on a Federation ship or base, he can try to sabotage it, roll a die, on a roll of one or two, the ship or base is destroyed. If a ship is at a planet or base, its crew beams down to the planet before the ship is destroyed and are marooned there. Otherwise, all hands are killed in an impressive explosion. If an engineer is aboard the ship, it is merely damaged. Flip it to its dilithium exhausted side. In any event, the, ship, the agent is killed. Three through five, there's no effect. Six, the agent is caught and executed, and the Klingon player loses one reputation point. If an agent is on a planet, ship, or base with a commissioner, he can try to assassinate the commissioner. On a roll of one or two, the commissioner dies. On a roll of six, the agent is executed, and the Klingon player loses one reputation point. Any other roll has no effect. An agent can only try to influence political status or sabotage or assassinate on one turn. Also, multiple attempts cannot be made on the same planet, ship, or base, or commissioner on the same turn. Transport and arrival of agents. Agents are transported by ships, just like other characters. They may take part in planetary exploration. If an agent is at a base or a planet and a Federation ship visits the base planet, the agent can sneak aboard the ship. The Klingon player notes that his agent is on the ship. If an agent is not currently in play, no, no location is noted for him, the Klingon ship can pick him up at any Klingon Imperial naval base or AA world. If an agent dies, he may be returned to play at the end of the next at the end of the current turn, picked up as above. Agents are never per permanently out of the game. Emperor's Men. If during the political phase an agent is on board a Klingon ship with at least one officer, or on a planet which has a ship with an officer has just with an officer has just explored, there is a chance that the agent will attempt to assassinate the ship's commander. Agents are fanatically loyal to the Emperor, and with the commander might interpret as within the prerogative a commander, the agent might interpret as disloyalty to the Emperor. Roll die. On a roll of 1, 2, or 3, the agent will try to assassinate the ship's commander. On a roll of 4, 5, or 6, the agent may instead attempt subversion, sabotage, or assassination at the Klingon player's option. If a player decides to try and kill a commander, roll die again. On a 1 or 2, he succeeds, and the ship's commander is removed from the game. On a 6, the ship's commander kills the agent instead and the Klingon player loses one reputation point. Any other role has no effect. All things considered, it is usually wise to carry agents on ships which do not contain commissioned officers. Control of New Worlds. When a planet becomes a Federation member, Federation player earns political points. When one becomes Klingon satellite, the, player, the Klingon player earns points. The number of points that you earn depends on the planet's cultural level. You earn three points for an A or B world, two points for a C or D world, one point for E, F, or X world. Replacing, shi replacing ships. When a ship is destroyed, place it on the game turn record track in the box occupied by game turn marker. On subsequent turns, you may roll a die for each of your ships on the track during the ship replacement phase. On a turn after the ship was destroyed, you get it back on a roll of one. Next turn, you on a roll of one or two, and so on. Six turns after it's destroyed, you will automatically get it back, unless you've recovered it before then. When you get a ship back, you may place it at any of your bases or AA planets, Replace, replacing commissioned officers. If any of your commissioned officers die, you may use the replacement officers. You can replace up to three commissioned officers, since you have three replacement counters. If you lose more than three commissioned officers, you're out of luck. A replacement officer can be picked up at any of your bases or AA planets. Each replacement officer can have one skill. They don't have skill names printed on the back. You can choose one skill, let's send the skill summary, which was plate. Obviously, Federation officers can have Klingon skills and vice versa. Write the officer's name, skill, on a piece of scrap paper. 
when you replace the dead commission officer. Replacing security officers, if ship begins its move at AA Planet in your home area or at one of your bases, it can replenish its security officers. Move the ship, security officers remaining, mark it to its maximum value. Three for cruisers, six for starships. A ship cannot move during the same turn it replenishes its security officers. It can replace its Dilithium Crystals in the same turn. When a ship replenishes its security officers, the owning player loses one reputation point. Extra turns. After 10 turns have been played, check the player's reputation point totals. If both players have negative reputations, the game is over. Go to section 16 and see who wins. If both players have positive reputations, subtract the lower reputation from both players' totals. Example, Federation 7, Klingon is 3. The Federation becomes 4 and Klingon is 0. If one player's reputation is positive and the other is negative, do not change reputation totals. Flip the game turn marker to its extra turn side and put it in the one box on the track. The player who has a positive reputation only may choose to buy an extra turn. Buy an extra turn costs one reputation point. If he buys an extra turn, only he can move, explore, roll for the commissioner's agents, and so on. The other player can take no action during the extra turn. At the end of the first extra turn, the extra turn marker is moved to the two box. If the player still has a positive reputation, he can now buy a second extra turn, but this turn will cost two reputation points. The player can continue buying extra turns until he runs out of reputation points. Each extra turn costs one more reputation point than the previous one. 3 for the 3rd, for the 4th, etc. Cannot buy an extra turn if paying the, ex the reputation point cost would reduce your reputation total below 0. Victory. After the last extra turn is played, refer to the political track. If the UFP side of the political marker is face up, the Federation player wins. If the Klingon side is face up, the Klingon player wins. No, the player can win with 0 political points. Remember that the political marker always shows the face of the last player to have had a positive political point total. Optional, chain of command. This rule is used only by mutual consent of the players and reflects Federation and Klingon Empire re regulations for the selection of commander. You're required to appoint highest ranking commissioner officer in a ship as commander. The ranks are Federation Kirk, Spock, Scott, Sula, Chekhov, Klingon Emperor, Koloth, Korox, Kestel, Gala, Zukov. Placement officers with a command skill are added to the chain of command, that is, the first such officer ranks sixth in the order of the apparent play. Other replacement officers, McCoy, Uhura, Vosov, Vara, may be made commander only if there are no rank commission officers on a ship which carries them. And then there's solitaire game rules or guidance. Solitaire game, when you play the game by yourself, choose either the Federation Klingon side, ignore the rules for the commissioners and agents. You win if you earn at least five reputation points and at least nine political points. You may have reputation and political points totals greater than nine in solitaire play. If you fail to do this, you lose. The requirements for a win become tougher as you play more solitaire games from Star Trek. In increase the reputation and political point totals needed to win by one for each three times you play the game solitaire. If you believe yourself to be an expert game player, increase the reputation political point totals at the end of every solitaire game. So that's the rules, then we'll get into the setup. I'm going to do the solitaire version, and in that version you don't use the Federation, Federation commissioners or Klingon agents. Um, but I'll discuss how the setup would work for them if you do, do that. So there's the map, the di displays, and then the neutral display. Put the 40 discs over here randomly. Put each of the security officers remaining at the maximum in each ship. Put the reputation markers for the Klingons and Federation at zero. Put the political marker with the UFP set up here. Game turn marker at one. If the Klingon player were to use agents, he would uh, write them down on a piece of paper and he may assign one of his three agents to the Federation home area. And there are no agent counters, he just writes them on paper. The agent may be on any Federation-based planet in the home area. 
Each player then takes two base counters, and then they alternate putting him in the Organa, Organian tree zone. Federation goes first, and you can't, you don't put him on Explorers stars, you just put him in space. Um, so this is where I set him up, the Federation and the Klingons. And each player takes his four ship counters. Each player can place his ships at any AA world or base in his home area only. So it's the home areas again. So Federation went Enterprise here, Starbase, Ares, a double A, Starbase, Starbase. Klingon went with the Swift Victory at a Starbase, Starbase. And then here to Starbase and there to a double A world. Ships can be placed in separate hexes or in the same hex. I put them in separate. Each player then assigns his commission officers to a ship. Any number of commission officers can be placed in each ship. They can all be placed on the same ship or they can be divided. When a commission officer assigned to a ship places counter in the ship box in the player's display. So of the seven, I put uh, Kirk and Scott on Enterprise, Spock and McCoy on Ares, Sulu and Uhura on Surak, and Chekhov, Beijing. Klingon, Koloff and Kora and Swift Victory, Broth and Wera on Hook Stoops, Ella and Horox on Death Rattle, and Zukov on Repentance. If the Federation player wishes, you can assign and you're always hike commissioners to his ships by placing their counters in ship boxes. Unassigned commissioners are kept off the board, and I'm not doing commissioners. So. The Klingon player wishes, he can assign either both his remaining agents to the ships. If his agent is assigned to a ship, the Klingon player notes the agent's location on the scrap paper. And then begin the game. And again, I'm not using agents. Then we'll get into play. So actually instead, I'm going to play it solitaire, but I'm not going to go by the solitaire rules where you have to get a certain number, you do either the Federation and Klingon, and then you only do them and you have to get a certain number of political reputation. I'm, I'm consistent with solitaire, I'm not going to use the agents or commissioners because they would require hidden movement. But I will do both sides, and then I'll just play it regularly, whether you complete turns and extra turns and then see who has the victory conditions at the end. So there's no reason, can't do that since there's not hidden movement, so I'll do it that way. First of all, I see who goes first. Uh, see who has the most reputation points. They both have equal, and then since they're equal, you look who has their face up on the political track, which is Federation, so they'll go first. In movement, first you do you do random events, see so a roll of dice. If it's a six, a random event happens, and a random event does happen. So for exploring star systems, random events, and, uh, and situation on the planet, obviously we use a paragraph book. And um, I'll, when I do it to keep it so you don't um, I don't want to let out secrets about what's in the book, so I won't. I won't stay with the actual paragraph number is, and I'll try to keep it generic as far as names of planets, so I don't, you know, spoil surprise when you play. I guess. So for the random events, you roll with the the green die with a ten, a ten, and then the um, the white one as a one. So for instance. That would be 26, although I'll make another roll for the table. So the roll I got corresponds to the, in the paragraph book, accidents will happen. While leaving the shower, one of your officers slips and breaks his leg. The enemy player chooses which officer is injured. You may not use any of his skills this game turn. So that's unfortunate. So the Klingon player will choose that that Scott is injured. I'll just indicate that he's injured by setting him up there. Okay, then we get into movement. 
So the so you go um, you move to a planet, then you see if your lithium crystals are depleted. So the Enterprise has Scotty, which normally would allow them a a modification of, to their die roll, but since he's not functional, even if they move to this close star, there's a chance that they'll be depleted if they get basically a two. They're okay. The Sirek will move a little close in two, and Sulu and Uhura aren't engineers, so there's a chance that they're they could be depleted there as well. So one, two, three, roll. They're okay. Aries is on double A world. They can go a little bit further. They're going to try to go a little bit further and be a little more aggressive getting out there in the treaty zone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if they roll less than a nine, since they don't have an engineer on board, four, they deplete their crystals. Then the Beijing. They'll do a similar approach too. They're going to go out here. There's a star base nearby. So since there's star bases nearby, they can more easily restore their depleted crystals if they don't make it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See if he gets less than eight. He gets right at eight, so he's okay. And then they can explore one of the worlds. The Enterprise is going to explore this world. They can only do one per turn. These ones won't. Draw off the pile. And again, I'll, I'll keep it generics you don't know. It's a, it's got a name of it, but it, it is a class C world. So I'll indicate that here. Then we go to the book and see what it says about that world. It's got a unique you know, description for each world here. We've been ordered to the planet to contact its inhabitants. The orders read at all costs, although no explanation has been given. As we approached the planet, we received a message from an orbital boy. Aliens, you encroach on the space of the planet. You'll turn back immediately. This is the only warning you will receive. Following orders, we press on and send out a landing party in an attempt to contact the, the planet and convince them of our honorable intentions. Assemble a landing party. So unfortunately for this case, the only eligible person I have is Kirk because of Randy Scotty falling out of the shower from the run event caused him not to be available. So it'll be Kirk. And then the full suite of uh, six security officers. Actually, I'll leave I'll leave a couple on board. So. You could write the security officer's number on uh, scratch paper, but I have enough counters here to indicate it here. So it's four here, and I just indicate that there's two left on the ship. So I do it. Okay, then we'll see what happens. And then you roll. I won't show the roll, but you roll the dice. Because I don't want to give away which paragraphs you go into. So in a roll of 1 to 2, you go to a paragraph. 3 to 4, you go to a paragraph. 5 to 6, you go to a paragraph. So I'll be going based on my roll. Then you read the paragraph. We've beamed down to Claudia Limbo. An inhabitant has appeared in the mist, claiming that we are outside and must be destroyed. Suddenly, all around us has appeared a town from ancient history, and we have discovered that we are cast in the role of lo the losing side from one of the most famous duels in history. You may go along with the plot, be it illusion or reality, and attempt by whatever means possible to change reality and win. And then for the Federation, you go to a paragraph number or Klingon, you go to a different one. Or you may attempt to convince the players that none of this is real and try to avoid the actual outcome through denial of this reality. The Federation goes to a paragraph, Klingon to another. Sit down in the middle of the street, close your eyes and refuse to participate in a sham, and then you go to a paragraph. 
So I'll do the scenario where I refuse to participate. It sends me to a paragraph. And then there's options. So one of the paragraphs says if there's no security guards, what happens? Another is for the case of no skills. Since, uh, it turns out, since you have security guards, you're not able to resist facing reality. So you have to make a different choice. Decide to go along with it. And then we are sent to a paragraph. So no, no matter what you do, you end up in a western town and one of your crew has been killed in a fight. So you lose, you have a casualty, so you're going to lose one of your, the, the red shirt security guys take the first hit, so you lose one of him. As the time draws nearer, you can only hope our advanced knowledge will allow us to defeat the opponents. An attempt to make to use tranquilizing darts failed, so you have to use guns. And then if you have personal combat, there's a choice. If there's telepathy, you have a choice, but no skills, another option happens. Let's see what skills Kirk has. He does have personal combat skills, of course. The enemies meet us at the location. They fire. But you're able to overcome them, make them unconscious. But you do take two casualties. So again, you lose a couple more red shirt guys. Go to another paragraph. Town disappears. A current inhabitant appears. The people, and they say, the people you said against you have been killed by bullets, but you did not kill them. Is that your way? You explain that it is. And suddenly you return to the ship. Shows no time has passed. And the boy shows a message of positive greeting. And you can proceed with the mission. Kirk goes back up here. Your reputation. Even R2. So your reputation goes up too. Your political goes up too. P2. It's pro-inclined. So it's going towards the Federation. Indicate that as such. And actually it says return any casualties as well so you get back to full strength. So that worked out well. Then the Klingon player goes, see if there's any random events. Nope. He's gonna be able, he's gonna be fairly aggressive as well. The repentance. Let's see if they have a engineer. No, he's navigation. Go up to this world, so one, two, three, four, five, six. See if his dilithium crystals fail. They're okay. See if the death rattle has engineers. They don't uh, have any engineers. He'll just move up here. Three. Nine, he's okay. He'll go a little bit further. He wants to go out here. Huck Stoops, see if he has any engineers. They don't, uh, they don't have any engineers. One, two, three, four, five, ten. It's kind of risky. Since his role is less than that, his dilithium is depleted. And then Swift Victory. Turns out they have a engineer, so he can take a little more of a chance. But that's his main ship, so he'll go out by this star base. That way, if his dilithium's depleted, he's got a star base there. So one, two, three, four, seven, and then he can reduce two from his die roll since he has an engineer. He's okay. Then their exploration. They have a few options. He'll have uh, one of his smaller ships explore. Death Rattle's got a good mix of skills there. So he'll have the, he'll have the Death Rattle explore right over here. 
draw planet. And I'm not, again, I won't show the names, but it's a Type X planet, which is, doesn't really have any technology. For that planet name, then, you look in the book. We are conducting a routine survey of an unexplored planet. Initial sensor readings indicate a lush world with moderate climate. However, there seems to be no animal life on the planet, human or otherwise. Assemble landing party. He'll put, uh, he'll have both his guys go down. Korax with several skills. And Gela with some good complementary skills. They'll just use these like I did with the Federation. I'm just going to have these. They're not security officer markers, but they look similar. I'll just have these to indicate the officers going down. All they could write them on scrap paper. These are actually um, inclined markers, but they look like the security ones, so I'll just use them for this purpose. So this is showing there's one remaining on the ship and they have two go down. Then you roll. On one and two, you go to one paragraph, three to four on one, and five to six on another. Four. We beam down to conduct a routine survey mission. Five minutes after we arrive, strange things begin to occur. One member of our party reported seeing a large furry creature identical to a pet he owned as a child. Another claimed to have seen an old friend from school. We questioned them thoroughly, but they both insisted that they had seen was, what they had seen was real. Meanwhile, the ship relayed a message to us from Imperial Naval Command. We have been ordered to finish our exploration of the system within 50 hours because of political considerations. Also, an ion storm is approaching and must beam up within the hour. You may beam the two crew members back to the ship to undergo a medical scan to determine if they are hallucinating. Go to a paragraph for that. Establish a well-defined base camp for further exploration. We'll do 504 for that. Continue explore with greater caution, 507. Then I'll make one of those choices and I won't, won't see which one. You go to the next paragraph that I point to. We found no trace of the animal or the man our two crew members claimed to have seen. Our tricord has detected no sign of life anywhere on the planet. However, other things were reported. There were sightings of dead family members and knight in armor. If these are hallucinations, then how can we all be seeing the same things? Then the choices. If you believe these things are real and to protect yourself, go to paragraph. If you think these things are hallucinations and ignore them, go to 511. Then I'll make a choice. Then you go to the next paragraph. We realize that these creatures must be hallucinations, cannot harm us. Brace best belief. We ignore the Black Knight. He charged. I ignored him as he killed my crew. Even now he swings his sword at me. Then we woke up to the hospital. Staying nearby was an old man wearing a white robe. What a strange race you are. We asked him what he meant and why we weren't dead. He seemed confused. I see you don't understand. This planet is a play world. Whatever you imagine comes to reality. It's obvious that your minds are too undisciplined for you to remain in our world. These are communicators and able to contact the bridge. Everybody seemed relieved and relayed to Imperial Naval Command. They seemed relieved to find us alive, but relayed that Imperial Naval Command was furious we'd spent so much time on the planet. You, so then you increase your reputation by two. Increased political by two. Since the uh, is going more towards the Klingons then, their last one is to improve it. You go down to zero, and is at zero, but the Klingons are the last one to improve it, so that's where the political track is. And they will be permanently neutral. And I'll just do a little more of one turn. I'll just go through the movement phase, but won't do the exploration because I don't want to show any more of the paragraphs. 
So first of all, again, random events. We'll see who goes first. And now the uh, the reputations are equal, but the Klingons are up on political track, so they'll get to go first. See if they have a random event. Dude, it's a six. Let's see what the random event is. Roll. Outpost destroyed by aliens. One of your bases of the other player's choice is destroyed. The player must immediately dispatch a ship to the destroyed base. It must move directly to the base. It may not explore until it completes its mission. So that's not good. So we'll decide that this one is destroyed. And the swift victory will have to head there. Because now we're in the movement. And then the others. Um, Hawk Stoops has depleted the lithium crystals. He's got to move back to a double A world or a star base. He can only go at two. He'll go there. He'll move up here. He's okay, he rolled, he didn't roll less than four. He'll stay there to explore. And we'll skip the exploration, so I don't move all more paragraphs. And then we'll do the uh, movement for the Federation. He doesn't have any random events. These two can still explore, so they're good. He'll move here. And now Scotty's functional, so he's good. He can automatically make it here because he gets a two reduction. So one, two, three. He's good. He's got to move back to the star base to restore his lithium crystals. So he'll stay there a turn and then next turn he can move. Oh, and again, we won't do an exploration because I don't want to reveal any more paragraphs. Hopefully you got a sense of it, though. That's Star Trek The Adventure Game from West End Games in 1985. It's a unique game. It's enjoyable. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show too much because I don't want to give away, you know, the paragraphs. But hopefully you got enough of a sense of it. It's not a combat game. It's a political game, an exploration game. But a lot of the paragraphs have themes from the original Star Trek series. So it's a definitely good, you know, reminiscent um, game. And it does, with the paragraphs, it does give you a sense of kind of being in that universe. And there's enough of the components that make it interesting. I, I like that you can learn more, you know, about, you know, the Klingons and what their abilities are. And you can look at it from their perspective as well. Um, exploration aspect is fun. Uh, play solitaire components are nice, especially the board is very nice. I like how you can set up landing parties and and then make those decisions based on that. And get your right mix of crew. Um, Enjoyable game. It's, uh, I'd say it's one of the better original series Star Trek games. I definitely recommend it. Star Trek The Adventure Game, West End Games from 1985. Give it, uh, it's unique enough and it's kind of going for it and I do like the original series. So I'll give it a 8 out of 10. Thanks a lot.